soon, Shadow. Soon. <laughs> Aura reached down and pulled the dart out. What do you mean, the sins? I thought they were disbanded and the ones that were left ran off to La Solicorn. Envy was the bar pony. He never went rogue like we thought. He set up a trap. He was with Lust, the new Wrath, and my mom. Aura. They took Oricalus. My mom. She has some kind of new spell that was able to trap him. I tried to save him, but he told me to let him go. I didn't know what to do, Aura. If I couldn't move my body, I would have curled up into a ball. Aura was looking at the dart she'd pulled out from me. Eh, this looks like a rad scorpion venom. So they wanted to paralyze you instead of kill you. That's weird, because they'd normally try to kill you. Aura, didn't you hear me? They took my uncle. Trees into her saddlebags, digging for something. I heard you, and I'm sorry about what happened. But Ori Callus can take care of himself. If he told you to let them take him, then I'm sure he has a plan. Honestly, I'm not that upset that he's gone. Just his presence alone gave me chills. Aura, he's been trying to protect me. How can you say that? She pulled out a syringe. Easy. Because family is too much work. You, of anyone, should know that. All I care about at the moment is helping you. Also, having him around worried me. He was a sin, after all. She injected me with whatever was in the syringe. Probably some anti-venom. There. You should be able to start moving again in a minute. Just don't start swinging. I have a right to an opinion. She was right. I could feel tingles running through my body. I need to go after him. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hell the fuck no. We aren't doing that again. Trust me. He'll be able to deal with your mom and her pet idiots. He told you to let him go, right? So then, let him deal with this. You have your own things to worry about right now. Stop obsessing over your mom and her bullshit. Didn't you say you were not going to deal with your family issues anymore? Aura yelled. But, didn't you? I looked away, not speaking a word. I knew she was right. She did say that, after all. But my emotions were really hard to control right now. I don't know, maybe some of whatever Lust did to me had a part of it. Ah, fuck shake, Sato. For once, you need to let it go. You can't do anything about it. And the world's full of shit you can't help. Rapes, kidnapping, enslavements, murder, and deaths are just five of the hundred or possibly thousands of horrible things that can happen in the wasteland every day. And there's no one there to stop it. Just because you think you're some kind of superhero to a lot of folks in the wasteland doesn't mean you can save every pony. Instead of being desperate or depressed because you lost your uncle, how about you fill me in on what happened here? Why didn't they take you with them if they were able to? And how the hell did all these NLR ponies die? She asked, looking over the piles of mutilated bodies lying limp as if dying mid-fright. I really don't know why they left me. They said something about needing me to do something first. Mom also said that she knew I'd go to Los Alicorn to find her in Oricalis. As for what happened to the NLR, it was lust. I have no idea what she did. But somehow she forced them all to kill each other until only one was left. Then she just told him to prove his love to her by killing himself. And he did it. I saw the memory still fresh in my mind. The sight of those ponies slaughtering each other for no reason was terrifying. Aura looked sick at the very thought of it. Damn. I had no idea any pony could do something like that. Yeah, it was like she hypnotized them into doing her bidding. I guess it's like you said. I can't save everyone. I got it from a comic book somewhere. Even comic books have good advice. Anyhow, we should go tell the captain back at their camp. He should know about this. Come on, you can tell me everything while we go back. Okay, let's go. When she got a better look at my face, she winced and took a sharp step back. Shadow? What happened to you? Huh? What do you mean? Is my face gone? I swear to Celestia, if another one of my fucked up dreams, I'm gonna scream. I promise. I feel fine. I said, feeling my face with a hoof. 
but everything felt normal. She dug in her saddlebags again and pulled out a small mirror. Luck. Taking it with my magic, I looked at my face, my eyes going wide. As before, when I stopped using Aquila's power, my coat and mane went back to their normal hues. This time, though, something must have gone wrong. There was a small streak of black running through my silver mane. Right over my right eye, there was a patch of my coat that remained white. It was like a bit of her was showing itself, showing the world that she was part of me and taking over. Was this what she meant when she said I'd regret going into my own mind and taking her power for myself? I gave the mirror back, feeling a little freaked. It must have been something to do with Aquila's power. She's taking over, and I look like a lopsided, spotted freak. Then I want you to stop using it. I don't care how powerful it makes you. If you're going to lose yourself to her because of that power, then I don't want you using it. No. Oh, and one more thing. Worry more about her than how you look. I won't put up with another OCD explosion like that time in New Pegasus. I'll do my best. But if I need it, I'm not going to just let you guys get hurt because I'm too scared to use the power I have. You've done fine without it for two months. I think you'll be fine. Just please don't get her to get more of a hold on you. Evil and insane don't mix with that kind of power. If she gets out, it's game fucking over. Aura said. I may not even be able to be about her at all, Aura. I used to look different when I was younger. This could just be me going back to the way I used to look. I'd rather not risk it. Aura said, walking back over to me and putting a talon on my shoulder. Come on, let's go. Fine. I followed her back to Crossroads Trading Post. As we started walking back, I saw something shining a few feet away. With a small smile, I picked up my sword that had gone flying away when I was fighting Envy. It may have been a fucked up day, but at least I didn't lose this. Silver linings, I guess? It took most of the walk back to explain to Aura what happened after I'd left Crossroads Trading Post and the fright that had broke out. She was shocked when I told her what Envy was. I personally didn't know much about Changelings because our school in Stable 28 didn't talk to about them at all. When I was still with Mom, she told me a little about them, mostly saying that most of them died during the war. The ones who didn't were hiding somewhere in southern Equestria. I always thought there were stories that Mom told to scare me away from wandering the wasteland. In the long run, it didn't do much good. I wandered the wasteland all the time. It's also probably why I never thought about Envy's powers being that of a changeling. Aura was even more worried about these strange abilities of lust. The only thing she could think of that would make ponies do what she said was mind control, but a pegasus couldn't be able to do that. It was almost impossible for even a gifted unicorn to be able to control another's mind. There was more to her power. There had to be. Either way, we'd have to be careful if we ever fought lust. I should have known that anyway. You don't become a sin because they liked you. Oricalus made sure all of his underlings had some kind of gift that made them deadly. Gluttony could just eat about anything he wanted to, and he was stronger than a fat pony should be. Wrath was a gifted unicorn when it came to a telekinesis and teleportation. He was also a very good sniper. Sloth is a pony that was experimented on by the Enclave, making him faster and stronger than any pony alive, though he used his energy up quickly. Now we had Lust, who could somehow get ponies to do what she wanted. Greed is an expert hoof-to-hoof -hoof fighter and has an armor that was almost impossible to penetrate. Pride was a living shadow that grew darker magic than any pony else in history. Last, Envy is a changeling that could take the form and same abilities of whatever he wanted. And is an excellent fighter. Every one of us, every one of the original Seven Deadly Sins, of Equinity, were special. I wonder what's so special about the new Wrath. He can't just be a good sniper. That's too unoriginal for my mother. Something else is at play with him. Something strange. I wanted to go talk to my friends first about what happened with the Sins, but Aura suggested we talk to the captain who was in command of the camp next to the Crossroads trading post. So that's what we did. She was already heading to Crossroads when we arrived. Luckily, she was nice and didn't blame me for the deaths of her soldiers. She did, however, ask that I visit JetBlue Skyport to talk to the pony who led the NLR in the New Pegasus area. The new Lunar Republic has heard a lot about you, Courier. 
and I'm sure we could work together to help bring Equestria back to its glory, she said reassuringly. I do hope you'll take this offer and accept the hoof in friendship that we are offering. As long as you don't expect me to join the NLR, then I'll see what I can do. I still don't want to join any factions around here. Even with a Question Express destroyed, I'm still a courier, and I have to make sure that I'm not hated outright by any pony. I replied. Does that go for the Steel Rangers, too? I've heard that you've been working with them in the past. I have, but I'm not part of their group, and after what happened, and have been hearing about their recent activities, I'm never going to join. I hope not. We've been worried about their recent activities. They used to run the crossroads before we did. We're worried as of late that they might try to take it back, and that's why we've had so many soldiers posted here, and why I sent so many out when we saw what looked like a dragon. I'll have to send for reinforcements now. If the Romans see that so many of our ponies died, or the Steel Rangers, I don't know how long it'll be I'll be able to keep crossroads out of their hooves, she said. I hope you're able to do that. Me too. Thanks again for letting me know what happened. I hope that you'll take the time to visit JetBlue Skyport. I'm not expecting you to join us, but listening to what my commander has to say can't hurt. You can go rejoin your friends, she said before heading back towards her camp. Before she could get too far away, I said, Wait, what's with you guys and the Romans anyway? She turned back around. It's war. War never changes. Nothing but fighting between two opposing forces over land and natural resources. Except we go about obtaining those two in a very different way. A different way? I met some Romans and they didn't seem that bad. I asked. That's probably because they wanted something out of you? If I was a murderous slave driver, I'd try to polish myself as much as I could to get outside help from a mere do well like yourself. Listen. Sure, you're a rough and tough hero, but you're still a kid. No offense, but honestly, most kids are naive. The Romans don't make agreements or negotiations to obtain things like we do. They take it with brute force in the bloodiest ways. She replied. Kid? This bitch. Look, I'm not stupid. I know what I'm being fucked with most of the time. She cracked a smile. I didn't say stupid, I said naive. You'll learn if you ever end up in one of their claimed territories, or goddess forbids, the giant camp across the river. There was an entire town taken over by those maniacs that I helped the NLI reclaim. And that's if you can recall that mess of reclamation. What I saw there was something straight out of the scariest of horror novels. You know the raiders hanging body parts everywhere and letting them rot? That's ten times less demented than what the Romans do. There was an NLR ranger who was taken with his wife and kid into a camp as hostages when the town was taken in the middle of the night. They starved him and his family for two weeks until they were so hungry they almost went mad. After that two weeks, they stopped giving his wife and kid water. Soon after the kid died, and they took away the body. The next day, they finally gave them some food as a reward for surviving. The irony... It was a pie. They were so hungry that they'd already gone halfway through before they realized the filling wasn't fruit. It was meat. Sure, some ponies eat meat in the wasteland, it's no big deal, but most of the time the meat isn't the flesh of their own child. When they both started freaking out, one of the bastards grabbed the ranger's wife and held her to the floor, when another used a nail gun to nail her four legs to the ground. The last memory he'll ever have of his wife before they caved her chest cavity with the bare hooves, is her being raped bloody by those monsters. The Romans take everything they want for themselves, and have fun while they do it. Not only to have fun, but also to inspire fear. I felt like vomiting the more I visualized her story in my head. I don't even know how to start to explain how horrible that is. I apologize, I should have toned it down. But now you know the truth. If I were you, I'd forget about anything they asked you to do, and watch your back. Anyway, I should get going now. I've got to get those reinforcements out here. She retorted before turning back around. At least she wasn't being all veg about it, 
like some ponies are when they want my help. Madame, I said as she walked away. The NLR tend to get straight to the point when it comes to things they need help with, unlike the Steel Rangers. It makes them a lot easier to work with. Although you have to deal with them always talking about bringing back Equestria. Although they think that running things the way it was ran during the war is the right way. It tends to get annoying after hearing about it fifty or so times. Nora said. Let's go find the others. I need to talk to them about what happened next. I thought we were going to go to New Pegasus, then Crimson Canyon. Why do we need to talk about what that happens next? Nora asked. That's not what I need to talk to them about. Don't worry, you'll understand in a minute. I said as I started heading off to where I could see my friends talking with Rusty and Cookie Bite. Windthrasher noticed us first. No big surprise there. Shadow, where the hell have you been? We heard something like a dragon in a fight? It wasn't a dragon. Envy attacked me. It's a long story, and I can tell you about it when we leave. Right now, we have other business to take care of. I said. Whoa, hold up a sec, Shadow. Stardust said. You can't just say that Envy attacked you and just leave it at that. And we'll all talk about it later. That's not cool. What the hell happened to your face? I know, and I promise to tell you everything soon. But first, we need to take care of some business with Rusty here. Also, don't worry about my face. That's the part of, we'll talk about it later, stuff. You promised me you wouldn't go off wandering on your own again. You promised! Wingnut started to say. Aura cut the colt off. Let it be, kid. Shadow will tell us soon, okay? Let's hear what she has to say first, before you start interrogating her. <sighs> okay. But you better tell us everything, Stardust said. Yeah, I will, I said before looking over at Rusty, who was patiently waiting for us to finish. Have you talked to Bite about the plan yet? Yes, she knows what's going on, though she isn't happy about it, Rusty said. Damn right I'm not happy about it, Bite said. You can't just send me away like this. I don't want to, Cookie, but I have to. This is the only way to keep you and the Mark II safe, Rusty said. Wait a sec, what's going on? Wingnut asked. Bite is going to be coming with us, and she's taking Rusty's Mark II with her. It's the only way we can think to hide it from Sapphire, I said. No way! I don't want her following us around! Wingnut protested. Too bad. She's coming with us. I already promised Rusty, I said. Not in any mood to deal with him right now. Bite looked at me with a promise of death in her eyes. What if I don't want to go with you? My head was starting to hurt from all the activity from today. Rubbing go on temple with a hoof, I said, Bite, Rusty needs your help keeping the Mark II safe. You're coming with us because I'm the last pony sapphire I would think you'd be with, or the other Mark II. She isn't going to come after mine until she has Rusty's, if she even does try. You'll be safest from the Steel Rangers while you're with us. Even if you don't like me or my friends, it doesn't really matter. You're not doing this for yourself or for us. You're doing it for your uncle, who's doing everything he can to keep Schrotzer and you safe. She's right, Cookie, Rusty said. I only trust my Mach 2 with you. You know how to use it. You know how special it is, and I can trust you to keep it safe. I wouldn't be asking you to do this if I didn't have to. She looked a little ashamed at herself for a moment. I'm sorry, Rusty. I didn't know it was so bad. I've been trying to keep you away from the troubles I'm dealing with at Trotston. You're so young, and you shouldn't have to be worrying about these kind of things yet. But now I have no choice. Trotston can't hold off the Steel Rangers forever, and I couldn't live with myself if I let something happen to you or the town just because I was too stubborn not to let the stupid Pip Buck out of my sight. So, can you please do this for me? But I can help Trotston, too. There had to be something I can do to keep them out of the town, she said, sounding desperate. He walked over to her and put both hooves on her shoulders, at eye level with bite. Help Trotston by leaving it for a while. You've always wanted to go explore the wasteland. This is your chance. She sniffed. Not like this, I didn't. I just feel like I'm leaving home when Trotston needs me the most. I did my best to smile to help her feel better as I said, You are helping your home bite. Sometimes the best thing you can do is lead the enemy away. 
This mission could even be more dangerous than staying there. Wingnut crossed his hooves, looking away and muttering to himself. It's a stupid idea if you ask me. Rolling her eyes, Windthrasher slapped the back of his head with one of her wings. You're such a child. Ow! What the hell was that for? He yelled, rubbing the back of his head. Bite did her best to hold back a giggle. Okay, if this will help Trotston stay safe, then I'll do what I can to help. Good. Rusty said, lifting his pit buck up and doing something with it. Whatever it was he was doing with it took a few minutes. Once he was finished, pulling out what had to have been a pit buck master key, he touched to his Mark II, quietly saying, never forget. There was a small flash of light from the bottom of his Mark II, then the latch that held it closed disappeared. He opened it and gave it a bite. Once you put it on, it'll activate as the new user, but still have a few old files on it. It'll set you up with a password that means something to you. Once it's done for, no pony will be able to remove it unless you're killed, or you take it off on your own. You won't even be able to do that without this key. Byte took the Mark II, then put it into her left foreleg. Once she closed it, the Mark II did the same thing as mine when I had first put it onto Stable 28. Once it was finished, the lash vanished. Damn, this is trippy. Yeah, it's a little strange at first glance, getting used to the EFS. It's like having a terminal screen stuck in your vision at all times. I said with a chuckle. It's awesome! She said, looking around, then back at her pit buck. I've always wondered what it was like to have one on. Rusty looked a little disoriented for a moment. I haven't had that off since I was a young buck. Well, if that's all taken care of, we should really get going. We have a lot more walking to do and not much time, I said. Could that day get any worse? First, I find out that we're traveling with Bite. Now more walking? Wingnut complained. Bite grinned. Ah, what's wrong, Wingnut? You don't like fun and adventure? Adventure's great. And I'm always up for having fun. But traveling? Not so much. He pouted. Don't worry, kid. I think we can risk it and fly to New Pegasus. It'd be a lot faster, and the quicker we get there, the more time we'll have to rest up before heading to Crimson Canyon. Trust me, we'll need as much of a rest as we can before we arrive at the party. Nora said. Hey, I didn't volunteer to carry any pony anywhere. Stardust said. But, Stardust, it's not like we have to go that far. I'm sure you can help our friends for a little while. You're strong and will do anything to help a friend, won't you? Windthrasher asked, her eyes getting big and pitiful looking. He looked at her, then rolled her his eyes. Fine, I guess I can help. But don't expect me to be a free ride all the time. Good. Then I'll carry the evil genius. Aura said. Stardust... You take Shadow, and Wingnut can ride with Windthrasher. Stardust frowned. Why do I always get caught carrying Shadow? If you make another crack about my weight, I'm going to poke one of your eyes out with my horn. I retorted. Ah, uh, fine. Let's just get going. I'm sick of being here, and we could use a night or two in New Pegasus. Speaking of which, why are we going to New Pegasus? He asked. Need to get a letter to some pony there for doorstop. I don't want to see if I can talk to Mr. Tops again. Awesome! Maybe he'll let us into the Lucky Horseshoe this time, Wingnut said. <laughs> Doubt it, Aura said with a laugh. Rusty moved closer to Bite and hugged her. You stay safe, okay? And don't give Shadow too much trouble. She smiled shyly. I'll try. He looked over at me. Keep her safe. Please. I'll do what I can. I can't promise any more than that. I said. I know. May the goddesses look after you all. Rushy said. You too. I replied before walking over to Stardust. With the final goodbye, we were off. Stardust taking hold of me, much like he had the first few times we flew towards Hidden Sands. Aura letting Bite ride on her back, and Windthrasher holding on to Wingnut. We watched as Rusty and the Crossroads Trading Post shrank below us, and then vanished as we sped off towards the 
bright lights of New Pegasus in the distance. Shadow, are we going to get a room at the Applewood again? Wingnut asked excitedly as he jumped up and down. We were all standing just outside of Match and Tariffs, waiting for Stardust to get a passport into the Strip for Cookie Bite and Wind Thrasher. I was able to explain what happened during the fight here, and what happened to my face. Wind Thrasher and Stardust both agreed with Aura about me using Akilla's powers. I wasn't going to try arguing my point. It wasn't going to change their minds. I'm not sure yet, kiddo, but it's a good possibility. We have enough caps now to stay anywhere on the strip we want, thanks to that raider bitch who attacked us outside of Crossroads Trading Post, I said. I hope Dusty doesn't take too long in there. I don't like being in freedom this late in the day, Aura said, eyeing a couple of dirty-looking stallions who were walking by on the other side of the cracked-up street. Windthrasher had her ears plastered up. This place is so noisy. I can't tell what noises are coming from where. This is nothing compared to the strip, I said as I kept my eyes on some younger bucks who looked like they were eyeing me from down the road. I just need to block it out better. I've gotten used to listening for danger while we were traveling. It's not as easy to ignore all the noise when we've been trying to listen for every little thing, Windthrasher said, wincing a little. As long as it doesn't cause you to lose your head again, we should be fine, I said. This place is a dump, Bite said as she walked out of the shop with Stardust. That tariff buck is a dick. Did you hear what he said to me? Stardust was chuckling to himself as he followed her out. Well, you did tell him he was using the wrong parts for that sprite bot he had behind the counter. He said he hasn't been able to get it working yet. So all I did was point out that he wasn't viewing the correct gems to power it, and the wings were made from older models. It's not my fault he can't take criticism, Bite said with a huff. You also told him he was a stuck-up cockwad, Stardust said. That's because he is, Aura said, winking at Bite. I'm glad the two of you were able to give Tariff another reason to hate us and never want to do business with us again. Did you at least get the passports? I said. Yeah, though I had to pay a bigger price for them this time. Cost 600 for two of them. He won't back down this time. Said something about him not owing me one anymore. Some friend he is. Stardust said with a laugh. And don't worry, I used some of the caps I got while I was with the Sins. Still had a few hundred in my saddlebags. You got caps while being a Sin? How did you get those and why are we just hearing about it now? I asked. Because I forgot, and yes, when I was pride, I had to have Wasteland currency, just in case. He said, giving Windthrasher her passport. There you go, Windthrasher. With this, you shouldn't have any trouble getting onto the strip. She took it, then said shyly, But won't ponies stare at me because of what I am? I doubt it. Most of the ponies in there are too drunk to care what you look like, or even if they did notice you, I'm sure they've seen a stranger. Laura said. Now, can we please get going? Oh, and Wingnut, don't forget to tell the guards I'm your bodyguard. Yeah, I know. I remember what to do when Shadow had to get you in. He said with a hint of arrogance and disrespect. Actually, there was another reason the price was higher, Aura. Stardust said, pulling out a third passport. I talked it over with Tariff, and even if he didn't want to do this, I was able to get him to do it. She took it with a look of surprise on her face. You were able to get Tariff to make me a passport. All I said was that I'd be sure that you'd stay out of his shop forever. He seemed to think that was the best deal ever. Thank you, Aura said. That was... Really nice of you. He waved a hoof. That's no big deal. Figured you deserved to be able to go wherever you want. Wouldn't want to keep a bird in a cage. All they do is sing, and in your case, complain that they can't go anywhere. Yeah, like you complained about how bad your hangover was after a night at the bar. Whatever it'll be, nice to have freedom anyway. Oh, and by the way, thanks for making it feel like old times, Stardust. It brings back a sense of normalcy. Okay, so, 
Do we have anywhere to go else before we head back to the strip? Aura asked, looking over at me. Nope, I'd like to avoid getting drawn into some pony's drama while I can, I said as we all started heading towards the gate to the strip. That's impossible. Trouble is drawn to you like fiends to a chem factory, Aura teased. You're real funny, Aura. Damn right, she said, giving me a wink. We were just passing by the Queen's School of Interpretation when a very familiar voice boomed out from the doorway. Do my eyes perceive me? Oh my, are the goddesses playing a trick on them? Is that beautiful, strong stallion really the buck of my dreams? Oh dear goddesses, why? We were almost there. Why? Stardust said as he did his best to hide from Sugarbuck, who was now already rushing towards us. Stepping in front of the fabulous and muscular stallion, I said, Hey, Sugarbuck, it's nice to see you again. He stopped in front of me, doing his best to look past me. Thank the goddesses above. We were all worried sick about you. I know, but we're all okay, and yes, we were able to get Stardust back. I said, laughing a little as I watched Stardust trying to hide. Stardust, why are you trying to hide? I just want to make sure you're okay. Now, come closer and let old Sugarbuck get a good look at you. Don't worry, I ain't gonna look too much. That would be ungentle cult-like, and we haven't even gone on a single date yet. Only sluts go after the affection and sexing right away. Nope, I'm fine. No need to worry about me at all. And what's this about dates? I've told you before that my barn door does not swing that way, he said. From that point, Sugarbuck gushed into emotional bliss. He said dates. That means there's going to be more than one. Who's this creep? He looks like an old-fashioned country music star with all the sparkles and, I mean, all the sparkle and no musical talent. Is he some kind of themed rapist? Bite asked as she looked at Sugarbuck. That seemed to pull Sugarbuck's attention away from Stardust for a moment. What, are you starting to travel an orphan in Shadow? Who's the kid and why is she saying such cruel and heartless things? I shouldn't touch some pony with my ten-foot pole if they didn't want me to. Then he looked back at Stardust. That's right. Ten. Stardust gagged. Gross. Name's Bite. I'm from Trotston. What's with the stupid main style? She said. Stu stupid main style. You walk around with twin ponytails making your head look like a pony's ass. And you have the audacity to say my main style stupid? He said in what had to be the most offended voice I'd ever heard come from his mouth. <laughs> I thought you looked like pony asses. Going that ass looking confused. My head doesn't look like an ass. Bite said, glaring over at Wingnut. I didn't say it did. He put his hooves up as if he was protecting his face. I just meant that sugarbug like stallions. And that's besides the point, Wingnut. I ain't going to tell, let this little girl tell me what looks good and what doesn't. And only certain asses suit me. Her head looks like an old saggy one, Sugarbuck said. Just drop it, both of you, please. We don't have time to do this, I said, pulling Bite away because she looked ready to pull her gravity gun out. Sugar Buck, we're heading into the strip. I have something to take care of. It was nice to see you again. Tell your sister I said hi, okay? Machado, I haven't had time to catch up. We haven't seen each other in ages, and it's been even longer since I've seen that sexy piece of stallion pie standing right over there, ready to be eaten. Sugarbuck complained. Then come with us if you want. We can catch up that way. That is, if you can leave Stardust alone. I said, turning to head towards the gate. I'm sorry I can't. The Queen needs me to help with some matter with the NLI hoarding food. If you have time when you leave by, though, come stop by. I can touch up that main of yours, he said. We'll try, I said as he walked back into freedom. He creeps me out, Stardust said as he showed his passport to the secure ponies by the gate. Why can't he get it through his stick, thick skull that I don't like stallions? 
That's it, I'm buying a rape whistle. I think he knows, Stardust. He just likes playing with you because of how you act. Maybe if you didn't freak out every time he saw you, he'd stop. It's not as fun that way. Plus, a whistle isn't going to do you any good. All ponies are going to think that some ponies blowing a whistle, but not for that reason. When that's said, as he showed his passport. And I think it's funny. He gets all flustered and freaked out. Yeah, it makes for an entertaining show. Aura said as she showed hers. It's not funny. I think Sugarbuck should learn to leave him alone. He likes mares, not creepy stallions who don't know how to take it now for an answer. Windthrasher said angrily as she showed her passport and walked past us all. I mean, come on. Stardust is too good for an asshole like him. That caught me by surprise. What do you mean, Windthrasher? You heard me. Now hurry up. I thought we were in a hurry. She said, trotting away in a bit of a blush. We all watched her walk away, Stardust saying, Well, she's right. Come on, we don't have as long to spend here as we'd before. Let's find a place to stay. We followed Wind Thresher as she walked off. Bite started to snicker. Damn, either she likes him or she's got some major mood swings. I laughed a little. Both. They're right, though. Let's go find a place to stay and I can take care of getting doorstops letters sent off. Good idea, Aura said as her, Wingnut, and Bite followed me in. Is there any good place to eat here? Bite asked as we started walking past the Lucky Horseshoe. They have food at the Applewood, though I've heard there is always good food at the Grand Royale, Wingnut said. Fuck the Grand Royale. Those ponies are a bunch of snooty assholes with caviar for brains, I said. You just hate them because they treated you like you were stupid, and because they kicked you out. Wingnut said, trying to hide his laughter. Well, she did threaten to shove a cane up his ass. Aura said, laughing along with him at my expense. That was fucking hilarious. Still, I wouldn't want to eat there. I've heard rumors that they're cannibals. Bite made a weird face. That's gross. Who would want to go to a place like that? They can't be cannibals. Mr. Tops wouldn't let them run the casino if they were, I retorted. I don't know, Shadow. I know that the tribe that they started as were cannibals. Who's to say they really changed their ways? Or I asked. The pony who runs this town? I said, pointing up at the lucky horseshoe. Hmm, I guess you're right. Maybe you just have to be a part of the high-ranking members of the White Hoof Society for that kind of thing. Aura said to herself. Hey, where did Windthrasher and Stardust go? I asked, noticing they weren't walking ahead of us anymore. Aura pointed towards the Applewood. Looks like they decided to go to the Applewood without us. Ah, uh, let's let them be. I'm sure Stardust will get a room for us like before. This will give me time to take care of the letter. I said as I started heading towards the gate that led to the other part of the strip, where the Unall Embassy and the other buildings were to keep them away from the casinos. I didn't get too far when two secure ponies blocked my path. Courier Shadow Star. Uh, yes? What do you want? I didn't do anything wrong, did I? I'm not really clear on the laws here. I said, taking a step back. The security pony spoke before... said... Mr. Tops has requested that you meet him in his office. Please, come with me. I don't have time to talk to him right now. Their guns pointed at all of us. He does not care that you need nor have time for. You will come with us now or be in violation of the law. Hey, Projector Face, she said she doesn't want to go. Bite said. Now back off before I take you apart and see what makes you tick. Don't bother, Bite. No matter what you say, it won't change what they're programmed to do, I said with a heavy sigh. Can my friends at least come with me this time? Only the courier is allowed inside the lucky horseshoe, the other one said. I'm not leaving behind while I go up in there. Either they come with me or I'm leaving. Tell Mr. Tops if he really wants me to do the job he asked me to do, and if he wants to talk, then I'm not leaving them behind. For a long moment, both robots stood there making odd beeping and whirring noises, then one said, 
Mr. Topps said that you may enter, but only you can go up to his office. Your friends must wait for you in the royal suite. Lingot's eyes grew big. We gotta go in! That is correct. Be warned, if any of you wander away from the suite, you will be executed upon sight. The other one said. I'd rather go gamble than wait in a room. Aura said. Oh, come on, Aura! No pony gets to go into the local horseshoe! Wingnut said. Yeah, big deal. It's an old casino. Probably smells like dust, old booze, and dead cigarettes. She said, yawning. Well, we're going. Wingnut said with a self-satisfied smile. Damn. Aura said. Chuckling, I started to follow the security ponies. See, if you were still my bodyguard, Aura, I'd let you go gamble. Wouldn't matter. I'd have to stay with you because it's my job to keep you safe as my contract holder. And if you still had my contract, I couldn't have as much fun with you. She said, walking past me and winking. Bite and Wingnut followed her, trying to hide their laughter. Frowning, I muttered my to myself, Always so mean to me. We walked past the blast shutter that normally blocked the door to the casino. Again, I was led into the lucky horseshoe by one of the secure ponies. Into the dead casino, the walls, tables, terminals, and floors covered in two-century-old dust. Only this time, I had company. Wingnut and Bite were looking around in awe at the large open room. Aura seemed a little impressed, even if she kept shaking her talons to get clumps of dust off them. The elevator door shook as it opened and a dim light buzzed from the ceiling. We all walked in with the secure pony as it pushed a button to bring us to one of the floors. When the doors opened again, I expected to be in a dusty hall that had old dusty rooms, but it wasn't. The elevator stopped right in a huge room. A suite with a large open sitting area and a huge floor-to-ceiling window overlooking New Pegasus. From the elevator, it looked like four other rooms branched off from the main one. Even more, the room itself was clean. I was about to ask why this area was clean when the rest of the areas weren't when a robot floated in from one of the rooms. It looked like Watts, only it was white and had different appendages. It floated in the elevator and spoke in a mare's voice. Hello, and welcome to the royalty suite. Mr. Topps says that you three can stay here while the courier goes to see him. I am Lilybot, and I am here to help you in any way that I can. Damn, okay, I take it back. I like it up here, Aura said, walking out into the room. Take as much time as you want, Shadow. I'm gonna relax. You think this place has one of those massage chairs? Wingnut, however, looked at what had to be a workbench in one corner. Dibs on the workbench! Hey, Phillies first, where are your manners? Don't you know that mares are the ones with the toolboxes? Bite yelled, running off after the colt. Did she just make a sex pun? Eh, no, she's just a kid. I guess I'll see you all in a little while, I said as Aura winked at me. We'll be fine here. See you soon, Shadow, she said, blowing me a kiss before the door closed. The ride up to the top was quick. The royalty suite must be close to the top floor. When the door opened, like last time, I felt like I was being thrown back into the past. The floor didn't look any different than it had when Nightstalker and the children occupied the place. I almost felt like the large Pegasus I was going to walk in at any moment and demand that he know who I was and why I was in his base of operations. As I walked towards the steps that led down to the lower levels, I noticed a room that before had been covered by a curtain. But now I could see into it. There was a bed and a few shelves, a terminal on a desk, and a few photos around it. I just caught a glimpse of the young Pegasus Stallion standing next to a young griffin, both smiling wide next to an old worn-down hut next to a gray cliff. That was the only one I got a good look at before I was ushered down the stairs by the secure pony. Once I was on the main level, I walked towards a huge monitor with the face of Flapjack on it. Welcome back, courier. Uh-huh, so what do you need? I asked, annoyed. The face changed, looking curious. Right to the point this time. I'm assuming I'm interrupting something by your bored and annoyed tone. Honestly, that look on your face doesn't suit you. Right on the mark with that one, Mr. Tops, or Flapjack, or whoever you are. I've told you before that I'm only using the face of Flapjack. I really don't believe you, Mr. Tops. 
I mean, who else could have gained access to this room apart from the Children of the Night or their brothers? This place was accessible to the Pew Ponies from the MAS and MOA. I yawned. A couple of floors below, yes. Now the living areas of the children on this floor. Really, I don't care who you are. You run this town and the ponies who live here. That's really all that matters. If you want to keep saying you're not the pony, I'm sure you are, then fine by me. So, why did you pull me away from what I was doing? A sigh came out of the terminal when he responded. I wanted to ask you if you put any more thought into what I asked you to do. When would I have had the time to do that? I've had to chase my half-mad friend halfway across Equestria, if you haven't noticed. Not to mention, I've had to deal with the sins, my crazed mother almost losing someone I love, blowing up a tower, fighting the Enclave again, and dealing with the Steel Rangers destroying my home. I replied. I know you've had a lot going on. All I wanted to know is if you've been able to think about what I asked. I am running out of time, and even though I know you have a lot on your plate, I really need you to do this for me. He said, sounding almost like he was begging, but not being polite about it. Honestly, I haven't really thought much about it. Even if I had, what am I getting for helping you? You didn't live up to your end on me helping to find Stardust, I argued. I didn't have time to. You lived the area with a few days after we met. If you really need something for it, then I can offer you a nice number of caps for the job. It would call for a job for the Equestrian Express. You get me what I want, and I'll pay you. Caps I can get in various ways, I said, looking around the room I was in. I have a better idea. I want access to the lucky horseshoe for my friends and myself. The face of Mr. Topps changed into a look of confusion. Why would I let you do that? Also, why would you want to be here? This tower works for keeping me alive, but apart from that, it's just a useless, dead casino. There aren't even any bits left in the slot machines. I smiled. This was also home to Night Stalker and the children for a long time. There are secrets here I'd like to look into. But apart from that, I need a place that I know is safe from the Sins or any pony else that might come after us. A place we can rest when we need to without fear of being attacked. Mr. Topps was quiet for a long time. There are places in the Lucky Horseshoe that I couldn't let you or your friends go. If I did, it could be deadly for me. I'm not even sure I want your friends in my tower. That's my price. Take good or leave it. You won't back down from this. I could just throw you out of my tower and the strip, you know. He retorted. I could. But who else would you trust enough to come up here and do this job for you? I shot back. He went quiet again. While he thought about it, I said I took the time to look around more, letting my eyes wander over the bright room and large windows, the steps that led up to a private room, and even another set of terminals next to a blank wall. I wondered to myself what that was for. Did it lead to a secret room the children had used, or was that where Mr. Topps lived in his so-called clean room? Maybe I should show Wingnut the blueprints I found and see if he could figure it out. Fine, but only if you don't go to a few places here. If you break the rules I set up, I'll kick you all out, and you'll still have to do this job for me, Mr. Topps finally said. I can do that. The same goes for this to my friends, but I want access to this floor, the Children of Night's floors, and the MOAs, too. Fine, though you won't be able to get into the Children's floors, the doors are blocked by a spell. Only they could get in and out. Those floors haven't had any pony on them since the war. Also, I'll let you all stay in the suite I've already provided for your friends. If you want to get into the Lucky Horseshoe, my secure ponies will let you up. So, do we have a deal? If so, I want you to head to Los Alicorn soon. Deal. I plan on heading there as soon as I've finished up a few things here. So, was that all, or did you need something else, Mr. Topps? A smile came to the face on the screen. Now that you mention it? Yes, there is. I wanted to know something about that pip buck of yours. I sighed, knowing what was going to be asked, or so I thought. What about it? I've seen it once before, on one of the security tapes here in the Lucky Horseshoe. Or at least I think I have. 
Did that once belong to Sweetie Belle, the famous singer? He asked. Looking down at my pip buck for a long moment, I thought to myself, why would he want to know that? Was he working with Mom or one of the sins? Or maybe he knows more about what really happened with the Mark II back in the day. I don't know much about him. Well, no pony really did. I'd have to play it safe and find out what he knows first. I'm not sure who used to ha have it before. I found it in my old stable. Even if it did belong to Sweetie Belle at one point, why would you care? The face on the screen changed again to curiosity. So, you really don't know what it is, or why your mother's hunting it, do you? I thought a smart mare like yourself would have done everything she could to figure it out. I have, trust me. Even if I do know more, why would I tell you? I asked. The face changed again to an amused look. Sooner or later, Shadow, you're going to have to start trusting others. Well, since you're on a terminal screen, I don't think you count. He laughed. Screen or not, I'm still a pony, as you know. Do I? It's not like I've seen you before. Only this terminal screen with a face on it. For all I know, you could be just some kind of AI. I said as I started to pace in front of him. Hm. You have a point. But I can't bring you to where I am. If I did, I would risk dying. But I understand your reluctance. The reason I asked was because I do know what that Pip-Buck is. There are a few files in this tower about them. The Pip-Buck 3000 Mark II, he said. How could you know about them? I'm not even sure the Children of the Night or even the MOA knew about them before the war ended. I'm sure Night Stalker looked into them after the war, but then he was up in the clouds, I said. That is where you're wrong, Courier. You see, around the same time that I came to take this tower for myself, Night Stalker came back here. I'm not sure how much about him you know, but he was branded a dashite and banished from the Enclave by his sons. This tower was one of the first places he came so he could hide all the information he had on the Mark II. That's how I found out so much about them. I was able to read those files, Mr. Top said. Wait, so after he left the Enclave, the first place he runs to is his old tower? Why would he do that? I asked. It's the only place he could hide things from his children, I think. They didn't know the passcodes to get in. Also, I'm not as sure his children never knew the Lucky Horseshoe was part of the children's base. Either way, they never came here to find his notes. I don't believe you. You just want me to tell you what I know. For your information... I'm not as easy to manipulate as I used to be. If anything, I'm the one who would be doing the manipulating, I retorted. He laughed again. Don't believe me. Look at this. The screen changed, and a moment later, a video came up on the screen. It was an overlook of the same room we were in now, only there wasn't any secure ponies in it. It was also dusty, like no pony had been up here for many years. As I watched, Mr. Top's voice echoed around me. This is security footage from 160 years ago. I watched for a moment, and I was wondering what he was going to show me. I mean, what the hell does old security footage have to do with? Then Night Stalker walked into the video through the door that led to the top of the Lucky Horseshoe. At least I'm sure it's Night Stalker. He was a lot older than he was in any of the memory orbs I've seen of him. His mane had gone mostly white, but a few flecks of gray and black were mixed into it. He'd grown a goatee and a mustache, his mane was longer, and he had a few more scars around his face. The one over his eye was still the most noticeable. He was still a big pony, but in his old age some of his muscle had gone away, and he had a faraway look in his eyes now. The look of the warrior who had seen too much violence and death in his lifetime. He looked around the room and let out a deep sigh. This place hasn't held up much over the years. He moved closer to the terminal that Mr. Topps used to now to talk with. Hope this thing still works. He started to type something into the keyboard. As he did, the screen turned on and flickered out. <sighs> Piece of shit, come on! He kicked the terminal, and this time the screen stayed on. Words popped into the screen saying, Welcome to the COTN Network Terminal Site 1. He typed a few more things, then a voice echoed out of the terminal. Welcome, General Night Stalker. It's been quite some time since you last logged in. How may I help you today? Night Stalker backed away from the terminal, then spoke to it. 
I need to know what state the tower is in. All systems are running normally on this level and the first four floors. The hotel is in need of repair. The casino's power is running at 5%. He interrupted. I don't care about the civilian floors. I only care about the status of the project and the top floors. No problem, General. The project is still locked down. The basement levels are still locked down. No pony has been inside the living area of the children either. The terminal answered. Is my power armor still here? Yes, General. It is still in your room. Night Stalker seemed to relax a little. I'm glad to hear that. I need to upload some files. My systems are still mostly locked down, General. I will need authorization first. He sighed. Unlock all systems in the tower. Authorization, General Night Stalker. Passcode, Aurora's Twin Peaks. Passcode accepted, the terminal said. The lights in the room came on and shutters lifted around the window, revealing a dark, cloudy sky outside. All systems active. How can I help you, General? He walked back to the terminal and plugged something into it. When the file started to upload to the terminal, he said, Keep these in my own files and give no pony access to them unless it's me or my children. Now I need to find out if you know anything about the location of any of the children of the night. Are any still alive? I can find the location of a few of them, General. Where is Babseed? I've checked the school in town, but it's been abandoned, he asked. Babseed is no longer alive. I show her tracker going offline 27 years ago. Last location was the Queen's cool of interpretation. Fuck, who could have killed her? Night Stalker asked. She was a strong fighter, even with that limb missing. I show Captain Greta's marker being at the location at this time that Babseed's tracker went offline. Fuck. I'll need to talk to her about that. Fine, what about Minette? Last time I saw her, she was right before the bombs fell. Lieutenant Minette's tracker stopped working three days before the bombs fell. So even Minette's gone. No, General. Her tracker just stopped working. It showed signs. No signs of her life ending. Something interfered with the tracker and it went offline, and it never came back online. His eyes went wide. Where was her location before it went offline? Her location was around the area of Splendid Valley, near Maripony. That is where her tracker went offline. I've been hearing rumors about that place. If they're true, she may very well be dead. What about the rest? Greta is in the area. I know about that. What about the rest? He said, cutting off the terminal. Lieutenant Thunderlane is in Stratus. Sergeant Cloudy Knights is currently in Stratus as well. Major Lightning Dust is currently in the Crystal Empire. What about Zappin? He asked. I have no records of a member named Zappin. Damn, I forgot. I mean Noir! Noir is currently at the Splitfire's Flight Academy. Good. Night Stalker pulled out a radio. Greta? Noir's still alive. He's at the Spitfire Flight Academy. I'm going to finish up here, then we can head out. I heard Greta's voice echo back through the radio. I know his tribe uses it as a base, but I haven't heard much about him in the past few years, Mooney. Are you sure that thing still works? It knew where the others were, and who was still alive, so yes, I'm sure. Speaking of which, you need to explain to me what happened with Babs. Night Stalker said, his voice getting dark. I know. I'll explain on our way. Hurry up. I don't like being up here so close to the clouds. Stratus is still on higher alert from what you did yesterday. I'll try to hurry. I'm still uploading the files for the information I got on those pip bucks. Once they're in the database here, I'm going to destroy the files I have. I can't risk anypony else getting them. He said. Yeah. From what you told me, you found out about those Mark IIs. I'm pretty sure they could cause a lot of problems in the wrong who's. She said over the radio. I agree. Let me know if something comes up. He said before putting his radio away and going towards the steps that led to the bedroom and elevator. The view changed, so now I can see the inside of the room. It was a nice place with a big bed in the middle. 
A couple of nightstands, a dresser, and a set of power armor in one corner. It was the set I first saw him in during the battle on Las Pegasus. At first, I thought he was going over to the power armor, but instead he walked over to the dresser, where a few pictures were standing. From the view I had, I couldn't make out what it was. But Night Stalker picked one up, saying so quietly I could barely hear him, If I do this, destroy everything that I built, will you finally see me? Will you finally see me for who I am out of the pony I've made myself into? When I take my last breath, will you see how much I care for you? I hope so. Because what I have to do, I'm doing for you. Not for Equestria. Not for some dead princesses. Not for any pony. Only you. So you can have a future. He set the picture back down, then turned towards the power armor. Let's see if this old thing still has some power in it. He pushed a gem on the back and it opened. So far, so good. He handed the power armor, letting it close around his body. The eyes on the helmet lit up, the glowing blades on his wings grew brighter, and the gems along the breastplate came to life. Nightstalker moved his wings a little, testing to see how they worked, then laughed. He tapped a gem on his helmet, saying, Greta, are you able to read me? I couldn't hear if she said anything back, but something must have worked because Nightstalker said, Good. I'm on my way out. Yes, the armor still works. I shouldn't be surprised. Manette and Amethyst Star always did a good job. The video cut out as Night Stalker started to head back towards the main room, Mr. Top's face coming back to the screen. As you can see, he came and uploaded the files that had all that he knew about the Mark II. At the same time, he also unlocked the systems, which are now how I gained access to the tower's network. Fine, so... What do I not know about the Mark II? I asked as I thought I knew what he would say. It can be used to unlock this so-called project, the children here. This tower is the first location the children of the night used. Your mother wants in here with a pit puck to unlock the project, he said. Uh-huh, and you want me to what, unlock it for you instead? Oh, no. I'd like you to stay as far away from my terminal for that project. I just wanted to make sure you knew that that thing can do, and why you should keep it away from any pony. If they got it in here with that and unlocked this project, then I'm sure it would be very bad for the Wasteland, and possibly the entire world. I may not seem like it, but I do care about the ponies that live on the Strip and in freedom, he said. Yeah, any project the Children of the Night are something that I want to stay far away from, trust me. All I want here is to have a safe place to rest while I'm in town. Maybe learn more about the children themselves, but that's it. I said, trying to butter him up a little so he wouldn't guess that I actually wanted to snoop a little. Good. Well, I'll let you get back to your friends. Take a day or two and rest and enjoy the strip. I saw that two of your friends headed towards the Applewood. I'll send a couple of my security ponies there to fetch them and let them know that you're all staying here. As I promised, you can use the royalty suite as your own base. And you can go to any of the top floors, even though I'm sure you won't be able to enter the children's floors. But feel free to try. Watching ponies fail to get through locks like that is always entertaining. Remember our agreements, Courier, and remember, I have all my eyes on this casino on you. So now, if you go somewhere we didn't agree on, I'll know. Thank you, Mr. Tops. No, Shadowstar. Thank you. And with that, the screen went blank and changed to another screen that said, please stand by. I waited a moment, then headed back up the steps. Instead of going towards the elevator, I turned towards the room behind the curtain. For a moment, I thought the security pony was going to stop me, but it just waited by the elevator. When I walked in, I saw that it was still in the same as it was in the security video I just saw, or so I thought. When I walked over to the dresser where the photos were, I saw at least six still standing there, but the one right in the middle that Night Stalker had picked up was missing. I hadn't noticed him take it before, so either I missed it in the video or some pony else had taken it after I left the tower. Damn, I want to know what he was looking at, I said to myself as I looked over at the other photos. 
One was a picture of Night Stalker and Lightning Dash from the days that they got married. Another was all the children. One was of his sister. Another of Lightning Dust and Rainbow Dash looking a lot younger and dressed in blue and yellow outfits. It was then that I saw something else behind one of the pictures. It looked like an old recording. Pulling it closer, I moved to put it in my pit book to listen to it, but I thought better. I had a feeling that Mr. Tops could hear things in this room. I mean, he did have access to the security cameras up here, so I wasn't going to risk it. He didn't need to know what was on this. It could be something stupid or something important to this whole Falling Shadows project. I'll just have to wait until later. Going back to the elevator, I followed the security pony. It looked at me, saying, Do you wish to return to your room or head down to the strip? I was thinking about heading to the royal suite. Then remembered Mr. Top saying I could try to get into the rooms the Children of the Night used. Take me to the children's levels. I can do that. But as Mr. Top said, you will not be able to get in. Those floors are blocked by a magic barrier. Just take me down. I sat, annoyed. The robot didn't say anything. We just pushed the button on the floor below this one. When the doors opened again, I found myself looking at a small hallway. At the end of the hallway was a transparent barrier. I walked closer and smiled as I remembered who I was descended from. I had no problem rocking right through the barrier and into the room beyond. It was strange walking into a place I've never been before. Yet in a small way, I had, through the memories of both Noir and Greta. The room hadn't changed at all. It was like the children of the night had only just stepped out a few minutes ago and would be back at any moment. Mr. Tops was an idiot to allow me access to this place without thinking that I could be descended from one of the children. Slowly, I walked over to the same window that Night Stalker would use to look out to the city below. It was still quite a sight. You could see the entire strip from here. Sure, it was kind of all rusty and broken, but it was still pretty good to look at with all the lights brightening up. Ponies, griffins, and more walked down the streets, either heading towards one of the casinos or towards another attraction on the strip. I can see why he liked to look out this window. It's a beautiful sight, I said to no pony. A mare's voice echoed behind me. It's beautiful indeed, though it's also a lonely one. I jumped and looked around, pulling Dreamwalker out. Who's there? From a dark corner of the room, what looked like around twenty or more pink gems flew in through the air. Each one had a small shell around it, with cables connecting each gem to the housing. They flew towards me and started to separate. Three formed a line, three more just in front of and above those made a small circle. Six made a bent line on each side of the first. Eight formed lines on each side going down, two for each. A final line curled up behind it. A bright light flashed and when it faded, a pony was standing in front of me. Not just any pony. It was a perfect likeness of lightning dust. The fuck? I asked, backing away from her. She cocked her head to one side and then asked, How did you get in here? This area is locked down and off-limits to any pony but the children of the nightmare. Or the princesses. What are you? I asked. I'm this building's security system. Now answer my question. How did you get in here? She asked, taking a few steps closer to me. I noticed that with each step, a small flare of light came off her hooves. I'm descended from one of the children. Minette, I believe. At least that's what my mother said. She stopped. Minette? I see. So her son survived the death of Equestria. We were wondering if he made it out to her cousins or not. Who's we? Why do you look like lightning dust? She gave me a cocky smirk. This is how Minette wanted me to look. I have no idea what her reasons were. My main function is to keep the two floors that house the Children of the Night safe and the penthouse that belongs to our captain. As to who we are, I meant me, Lightning Dust, and Captain Nightstalker. Did the captain send you? I couldn't help but laugh a little. I don't think that's even possible unless he's a ghoul. It's been 200 years since the war ended. He's dead by now, I'm sure. Her body flickered for a moment. I guess you are right, though I haven't found any information that shows the captain has passed away. I'd say that it was stupid for me to ask you that, but I'm a computer program and didn't have all the correct information to assume that he might be deceased. The fact that it's been 200 years 
wouldn't have played a factor in him possibly being deceased because of the existence of ghouls like you mentioned before. I looked even confused at her. How would you know that? Every member of the Children of Night had a tracker implanted on them. It shows their location as well as their health. It's possible that the captain had removed his tracker, or the tracker is malfunctioning. And I cannot find the location, but the last report that came in said that his heart was still beating. She said, From what I heard about him, he disappeared over 160 years ago. Nobody knows what happened to him. And that would coincide with the information I last had on him. My last location shows the captain was around the Twin Cities. His tracker went dead after that, but it never gave off a signal that his heart stopped. Something came to mind when she said that. A note I found, the absent ruins, and the sword I found with it. The memory orb. I pulled out my pit buck and used it to find the letter. Pulling from my saddlebags with the sword, I also remembered what Orad said. Misery. The letter was taken out to some pony named G. What did that mean? Looking back at the glowing something that looked like lightning dust, I asked, Would you be able to tell who wrote this letter? Or do you know who this sword belonged to? She walked closer to me, looking at both the letter held in my magic and the black sword. The sword is easy. It is a set made for Greta, the captain's best friend. The swords are made from the hardest and strongest metal found in Equestria, and the edges are made of the rare material called star metal. Joy and misery are their names. And the captain had them commissioned for her after the evasion of Las Pegasus. They were very hard to break and can cut through almost anything. The letter, however, looks like it was written by the captain. It matches his writing. So the G in this letter is for Greta. If it was written by him, why would he sign it A.M.? I asked. It is very possible that the not Captain Nightstalker signed it with his real name, possibly to make sure that no one else knew it was him. Greta is one of the only who knows his real name. I was another, or the real lightning dust, I should say. She replied. What was his name before he was Nightstalker? I asked, hoping to get some information from the mysterious Pegasus. That information is classified, she said. What does it matter now? It's not like I'm going to blab government secrets to the enemy, I asked. I cannot say. My programming just has that and a few other things listed as classified. The only ponies I can tell about that are the Captain, Greta, Lightning Dust, or the Captain's descendants, she said. Fuck. Wait, do you have an access terminal? Of course I do. It is right over there, she said, turning and heading down one of the halls. I followed her towards the same room where I saw Manette and Amethyst Star working on Night Stalker's new suit. The room was filled with tech of all kinds. If Nexus was able to get in here, he'd pass out from all the junk. Bite might do the same. In one corner was a small terminal. The not lightning dust led me over to it. This is the terminal that Manette set up to update my programming, she said. I smiled. Good. Walking over to it, I hooked up the Mark II and let it do its work. I was surprised when I had to manually hack into the terminal after the Mark II got past some of the security. But that was smart and probably just as good as with tech as Apple Bloom was. It took me about five minutes and multiple tries to get the right password. It was obfuscate. What the hell is up with smart ponies and their fucking stupid smart words? Once I was logged in, the mayor said, What is it that you are doing? I started to go through the files looking for something I could use to change your programming. I'm going to change your programming so that you'll tell me what I want to know. That action is not authorized by Manette or the captain. If you want to stop messing with my terminal, I'll have to terminate you, she said. <laughs> I'd like to see you try. Nothing more than light shell that talks. Many have tried and failed to kill me. I was pretty much surviving by accident. I said as I found the file I was looking for. Now, how do I get this to work for me? As I looked through the settings, I saw one, that the set of security program to work for any pony that was able to get into the children's floor while a lockdown was on. Before I could click on that option, a gun turret popped out from the ceiling and pointed at me. The mayor, who looked like lightning dust, said in a deeper voice, Step away from the terminal. Turning to look at her, I grinned. Sorry, can't do that. And before she could do anything about it, I changed her setting. A spark of light ran down her body, and the anger on her face vanished. The gun turret popped back into the ceiling, and she was pleasant once again. My apologies, miss. 
Since you aren't able to enter this floor, you can do what you need to here. That was a little too easy. Whoever designed this place was either not as smart as everyone thought they were, or very trusting. My name's Shadowstar. Now tell me, what's Nightstalker's real name? And everything else you can tell me about him? Shadowstar, even I don't have a lot of information on Nightstalker. And what I can tell you is this. When he was a cult, he was with his parents in the mountains a few miles away from the Griffin's homeland, Griffinstone. From what the records show, his parents were historians and they were studying the old Griffin Empire. A storm hit and they got stuck in the snow. Both of his parents didn't make it through the storm. Greta was the one who found him, almost frozen in a cave. She brought him back to Griffinstone, and with the help of her grandmother, they were able to nurse him back to health. They tried to help get him back to Equestria, but he didn't want to leave. It turned out that he had no family left with his parents dead. They took him in, and he was raised by the Griffins, they both called Gran. Very little is known about this time and the Griffins, but I know that he was injured by an older Griffin, one who was picking on Greta when they were still young. That is how he got the scar over his eye. I see. But how did he end up having prickly Petal for a sister then? I asked. Oh, well, Petal's parents are in Griffinstones on diplomatic mission for Princess Celestia. And that's how they met Nightstalker. They happened to know his parents, and they convinced him that he should go home so that he can know his own race. He didn't want to go at first, so Gran sent Greta to go with him. She answered. I remember him saying something about that in a memory orb. So why did they call him Mooney? She chuckled. And that was a nickname given to him by Greta when they were young. Because of his cutie mark? I asked. Oh no. This story was told to the real Lightning Dust after Nightstalker married her. He had that name since before he had his cutie mark. His real name is a reference to his real name, Absent Moon, a.k.a. Mooney. My eyes went wide as I looked back at the letter. A.M. He started going by his old name when he left the Enclave, so no pony could find him, because a few ponies knew here who he was before he was Nightstalker. That would make sense. He hated his old name because he thought it was a weak name. He never wanted to be seen as weak, so he changed it as soon as he could. When he came back to Equestria, he only went by Mooney. The only ones who knew him as Absent Moon were the Griffins, his adopted family and later Lightning Dust. She said with another smile. Personally, I think his old name fits. I cocked my head. Why is that? He was named Nightstalker because his best ability was being able to fly silently and use the cover of night to his advantage. He was the stalker of the night, the shadow in the darkness, the blade that kills from the dark. He had a lot of titles when he was a soldier, but Night Stalker stuck. The reason I still think his old name fits is because Absent Moon is another name for a new moon. The one night a new moon is in the sky, the night is at its darkest, she replied. I thought about that for a long time. I remember some ponies saying that the absent ruins were named after a pony. It must have been named after Night Stalker. Only after he left the Enclave, because he started going by his old name. If he died in those ruins, would some pony have named them after him? Did I pass by his bones while I was running away from Wrath while I was there? What else was left in these old ruins that used to belong to the old stallion? And something else came to mind. Night Stalker's memory orbs that I couldn't get into. One of them said the password was his name. When I'm done here, I'm finally going to see what's inside that thing. One more question. Do you know anything about a project called Falling Shadows? I do not. The files are here in the building, but Mr. Tops has blocked my access to the top floor. Damn. I should have known it wouldn't be too easy. Oh well. I guess I should go see what my friends are doing. Is it okay if I visit another time if I have more questions about Night Stalker? I asked curiously. My job is to help any pony on this floor, and the next, and to protect the secrets that lie from here from intruders. I would be delighted if you came to visit again, as long as you can get inside. All I ask is that you keep any of the secure ponies out of here. Mr. Tops would love to get access to this room, and I know that the captain would not like that, she said. Thank you, I said, turning to leave. As I turned, I saw something on one of the shelves. It looked like a black and blue crystal that was slightly bigger than a memory orb, 
at a similar silvery glow around it. What's that thing? She looked over at it. Oh, that is one of Miss Minette's favorite possessions. It's a memory crystal. Uh, memory crystal? Was that something new she was working on during the war? I asked. No, it is much older than the war. She said it used to belong to one of the first members of the original Children of the Night, from back in the day when both sisters ruled Equestria, before the rise of Nightmare Moon. From what I have in my database, those crystals were very hard to make, and more of a true experience than a memory orb. They're supposed to be dangerous. Manette said that you need to have a lot of magical prowess to enter one. She said with a smile. Can I take it with me? I asked. I see no problem with it. It has been a long time since any pony has viewed it, and I don't think Miss Minette is coming back. Just be careful taking it down. It's a lot easier to pull into a memory crystal if you're using magic. If you don't have enough, you can still get pulled in, but you might never be able to come back out again. I reached up with my hoof and pulled a crystal off the stand and placed it into my saddlebags. I wasn't going to risk getting stuck in a memory from over 1,200 years ago. I'm sure I have enough power to handle it. Well, there was no telling how long it would be. Once I was done with that, I headed back towards the elevator. Thanks for your help. Um, what do I call you? You may call me Harvinger. I look forward to your next visit, Shadow Star. She said, and with that, the form of lightning dust faded away, and the gems that formed her body flew back to the corner of the room. Well, I wasn't expecting that. I'll admit she was very helpful, though. I said to myself as I walked back into the elevator. I wonder what Aura will think when I tell her about this place. The secure pony brought me back to the royal suite. As soon as the door opened, I was almost knocked over by stardust. Shadow, can you believe this? We're in the lucky fucking horseshoe, in the royalty suite. I was about to get us a room over at the Applewood when those secure ponies came to tell us to head over here. I thought it was some kind of sick prank. Well, I also thought it was a trap to use this as leverage to get you to do something for Mr. Tops. But I guess all's well, so there's no need to panic. He took a deep breath and let it out as he closed his eyes. Goodbye, paranoia. I pushed him off me so I could get out of the elevator. Stardust, calm down, and don't tackle me again. Like you always tell me, you're heavier than you think you are. <laughs> Sorry, Shadow. I'm just so excited we get to stay here. Stardust said, following me out. How long do we get this place for? As long as we want. I made a deal with Mr. Tops. He said we can use this as our new home. I said, looking around. I saw Wind Thrasher stretched out next to a sofa, next to a window. Her wings were spread out and her eyes were closed. Jeez, she really spreads out when she's comfortable. I feel bad for whoever ends up with... She's probably a bed hog. Wingnut was sitting with Bite, fiddling with her Mark II. Where's Aura? She said something about taking a bath. We all decided while you were gone that you two should get the master bedroom since it's the biggest. Wait, did you say as long as we want? Yeah, I did, so have fun. I'm gonna go check on Aura. I said, heading towards a large set of double doors. Bite grinned over at me. Gonna go cop a feel, Shadow? You're such a perv. I mean, the least you could do is wait until she's out of the bath, or is that your thing? You should try and have some self-control. As I walked by, wingnut in her, I got my muzzle and joy from her ear. If you really want to join us, Bite, you don't have to make snarky comments. Just ask. Ew, as if... She said, gagging as I giggled evilly walking past her. Walking into the room, I was amazed at the large bed and the decor of the room. I saw that the door to the bathroom was slightly open, so I made my way over to it and poked my head in. Aura, are you in here? I saw her lying in the bath. She opened an eye and smiled at the sight of me. Hey, it's about time you got back. Can you believe how nice this place is? There's these fuzzy ball things that make the water smell like stale candles. Yeah, and even better, we get to use this room as long as we want. I said as I walked over to her, giving her a kiss. You look like you're really enjoying yourself. We need a little R&R &R after all we've been through. 
Now, how about you come join me? The bath isn't as big as the one in the kingdom was, but there's still some room. And jets. Sorry, I already tried them out. She said with a wink. Sounds like a good idea. I said, setting my saddlebags down and pulling off my barding and duster. Once they were off, I slid into the warm water. Ah, uh, now this feels fucking good. I rested against her and closed my eyes, just letting the warm water flow over me. Aura wrapped one of her talons around me, holding me close as she said, Nia think there ever be a time when we won't have to fight. I hope so. Though, with our luck, I doubt either of us will be lucky enough to live long enough to make it to a time like that. She sighed and started to rub my chest slowly. There's more truth in that than you know, Shadow. Every day I worry that something's gonna happen to you. Or to Wing Knot, Wind Thrasher, heh, <laughs> even Stardust. We've made a lot of enemies over the past two months. I'm afraid one day we're gonna run out of luck. Opening my eyes, I looked up at her. What brought this on? I know that our lives are dangerous and all, but normally you're the first one to run into danger with a smile on your face. I think it's a mix of nearly dying and the attacks as of late. Putting it in perspective, we should have died on the palisade, or during the attack on Cartwheel. Hell, you were attacked with Nightshade just yesterday, Raiders earlier today, and the Sins. It's like, the more we look into your past, the worse it gets. I just started thinking that one day I'm going to be alone again, she said with a small hitch to her voice. I moved a hoof up and touched the side of her head. I can't promise nothing bad will happen, but I will promise you that no matter what, we'll always be together. If something happens to me, then I'll always be in your heart. She chuckled a little. You know that griffins don't believe in that right. I think it's more the thought that counts. Fine. Then I'll make you a promise. If something happens to me, I'll find you again in my next life. Something about the way she said that made me feel strange. I lowered my hoof and looked down at the water. I thought that every life is a new life for griffins. If you died and moved on to a new life, you wouldn't remember me. I felt her talon move up to my chin, slowly making me look back into her icy blue eyes. Yes, every time we reincarnate, it's a new life, and I wouldn't remember you from my past life. But I know that there are some souls that love each other so much that they always find each other in every new life. We have few stories of griffins who are like that. You love me that much? I asked. She moved down and kissed me before saying, Shadow, I think I fell for you the first day I met you. I couldn't help laughing a little. When you first met me, you were trying to turn me in for a bounty. She cocked a smile. True, but even then, you were something about you that I found captivating. At first, I thought it was just my fancy for mares. You reminded me a little of Tripwire, and I tried to throw off the feeling. In the end, I couldn't, so I followed you. Part of that was to pay back my debt, but I also wanted to get to know you more. And I did. So if something happens to you, I shouldn't freak out like I did in the kingdom? I asked. She laughed. Yeah, that was a stupid thing to do, I'll admit. But it was also kind of sweet of you too. I don't think you should go blowing up buildings and trying to take on a group like the Enclave again over it. Trying to change the subject to something a bit happier, I asked, So you never told me. What happened with Gigi and you the other day? Her face fell a little as she said, She told me a few things that I never knew. I was kind of angry at her for it too, but in the end I'm glad I finally talked to her. I always thought my mom disapproved of me because of the way I am. Turns out you were right, and I didn't know her as well as I thought. We haven't talked much since I was young. So you two just talked about the past? That and a few other things. She told me she wanted me to go to the celebration, but she doesn't want me to rejoin the Talons. She said she wants me to be happy and not be held down by the rules like I was before. You'd said something like that when I confronted her about it when we were at Crimson Canyon? Yeah, she told me that too. I am a little upset you didn't say anything sooner, but I also understand what it's like to deal with my mom. She said with a sigh as she perked up a little. Oh, 
but I was going to ask. What took you so long to get back from talking with Mr. Tops? Oh, shit, I almost forgot. I said, then I told her about what I was talking about with Mr. Tops and about my trip to the floor below. I told her about the thing that took the form of lightning dust and about what I learned. I told her that she told me that the sword I found was in fact misery, the blade that belonged to Greta. And then I told her about the crystal I found. I knew I was right about that sword. Strange that you found it in the kingdom. Not really. From the look of the note I found, it looked like Greta gave it to Night Stalker, and he left it behind for her later. I said, How'd you know it was left by Night Stalker? There's no way she would have given him misery. They hated each other after she started the Red Talons. She retorted, I think they must have made up a few years later when he was made a Dashite. The note left with the sword was from him, but he used his real initials to sign it. I said, Wait, his real initials? No pony or griffin knows his real name. Oh yeah, well, I do now. The computer thing told me, uh, knew it and told me. What is it? She asked. I could hear the anticipation in her voice. Sorry, can't tell ya. It's a closely guarded secret. If I told you, I'd have to kill you, I teased. She started to fidget nervously. Come on, Shadow. I could tell you if I could. Good goddesses, she thinks I'm serious. Loose lips sink ships, says the captain. No, loose lips mean bad sex. And you're not gonna get any unless you tell me. Oh, she's playing hardball. Ha, <laughs> you think that's gonna break me? I'm a stable, and this secret is my precious inhabitant. She huffed. Fine, then I just won't talk to you. How's that going to work if you want to keep asking me what the secret is? I cleverly asked. She stammered a bit. Ugh, ugh, I don't know. I figured me not talking would irritate you enough to get you to tell me. My point exactly, you just talked to me. It would be agony for us not to talk to each other, and I think you'd break first before me. Would not. I can just as easily drown, you know, she argued. I snickered. But then I wouldn't be able to tell you what Absent Moon's name is. She sighed. I guess you got a point. Wait a minute. You are fucking with me. Yep. She turned her head away from me and crossed her talons. <laughs> Bitch. I also turned my head away from her. Jerk. She started to lightly laugh, like she was holding back hysterical laughter. See? I can do it too. <laughs> yeah, ha ha, very funny. I thought the name wouldn't mean anything to her. Borora looked like I'd just hit her in the face. Absent Moon, huh? He's a stallion that spent a few months in Crimson Canyon right before Greta ran off. The rumors were that she broke Rule 7 herself and ran off with a stallion, leaving her son in charge of the Red Talons. She was never heard from again. You mean that stallion was Night Stalker? Yeah, I'm even more convinced of it now. Night Stalker just vanished one day a little while after he became a Dashite. If Greta vanished around the same time, then they must have gone off together and either died or made a life for themselves away from Equestria. I said, resting my head against her chest again. Is that why you don't like being compared to her? Yeah. It's bad enough that I was kicked out for breaking the same rule. It's even worse that she's my distant grandmother. But yeah, I can see how her disappearing matches with Night Stalker. One thing for sure, you have to talk to Tonto when we get back to Crimson Canyon. I know. I wish I could have talked with him more in Cartwheel, but my head wasn't in a good place at the time. I'll make sure to set aside some time to talk to him when we get there, I said. Good idea. Well, I think we've talked enough. How about we get cleaned up and out of the tub? If you want, we can see how much fun that bed in the room is, she said with an evil grin. I'll never get anything done if you keep distracting me, I said with a laugh. I don't know. I'm sure there's one thing you can get done. Maybe two or three. Plus, there's a cloin slot on the bed that makes it vibrate like a massage. Maybe.
maybe it can massage other things, she said. Aura, you're not... I started to say, but she found a way to make me go quiet. Oh, look. I found the off button. Cool. I wonder what else it does. She said, laughing as her talons wandered. So, evil. A couple hours later, feeling refreshed and a little wobbly from Aura showing me a new trick or ten, I was heading down the strip towards where the Enclave's little skyport was supposed to be. Aura was still up in the room with Wingnut and Bite. Stardust offered to go with me, but I thought it would be a bad idea seeing as he was technically a runaway. Windthrasher was walking next to me, looking around at the sights, and as we worked our way past the drunk soldiers, whores, and robots. This place is amazing, Shadow. Though, it's really loud. How do ponies sleep in this city? Windthrasher asked as we passed one of the gates that led to the back area of the strip. I'm not sure this town really ever sleeps, and if it does, I think a lot of alcohol helps, I replied. When Stardust and I went into the Applewood, I couldn't believe how many ponies there were. He said you guys stayed there when you were here before. I bet it was a lot of fun, she said, her wings fluttering as she jumped up and down. I'm not sure about it being a lot of fun. Most of what I remember was being caught with my tail up after my bath by Wingnut, dancing like a drunk fool in front of a lot of ponies, sleeping with a singer, vomiting on stage while a nice ghoul was trying to sing. So yeah, and I ran into the sins. Yeah, loads of fun, I said, rolling my eyes. It couldn't be all that bad. Sadly, it was. But I did have fun while I was doing some of those things. Just looking back now, it doesn't seem as fun as I thought it was. I said, then looked over at her, I added. You're looking a lot better, Windthresher. It's almost like you're back to your old self again. She beamed at me, again showing off those very sharp fangs of her. I've been feeling like my old self, too. I think talking to Stardust has been helping a lot. He told me that whenever I'm feeling like I'm about to lose control, just to talk to him, and he'll help me get through it. I gave her a quizzical look. When did you two have time to talk? We've been traveling most of the time. We started talking a lot when you were learning how to fight with Yaksha. He's really nice, so brave and strong. He's a good listener. He asked me what life was like in Stable 9 for all those years I was trapped in there. It was nice to be able to tell somebody about all those times for once, she said, blushing a little. Stardust, a good listener. Are you sure you're talking about the same Pegasus that I know, or an imposter? I teased. She gave me an angry face. Hey, he is a good listener. He really cares about his friends, you know. And that goes for Aura and you, too. I gave her a sideways glance. You like him, don't you? Of course I do. He's my friend. Don't you like him? She asked, a little confused. I couldn't help but laugh. No, I mean you really like him. Like how I like Aura? You know, as in you want to take a trip to the love shack? Her face started turning bright red. I do not. Shadow, no. She covered her face. You do. It's written all over your face. And you chastised me for not telling Aura how I feel. Her blush deepened as she held one hoof over her face, shaking her other hoof up and down violently, her head shaking similarly to her hoof. Don't tell him, please. He's the first nice stallion I've met in a long time, Shadow. I don't want him to think I'm a weirdo or something. Well, you are a weirdo, but no more than myself or the rest of us. What are you so worried about? Shadow, look at me. I'm a freak of nature. Well, actually science but a twisted creature that can barely control herself nonetheless. Windthrasher, you're not a freak. You're just unique, and quite honestly adorable when you're all cleanish and not trying to kill us. I say cleanish because the wasteland makes us gross. She frowned at me. I have scales and fangs. What's cute about that? You haven't seen yourself when you're in a bubbly mood, have you? I know you can't see it because I'm still sure you can't remember what you used to look like. We've only known you as a bat pony, not a pegasus. You used to be the mare we knew was sharp. Even then you weren't that bad, just scared and alone. And at the end of the day, whether you're sharp or wind thrasher, you're still you and we like you the way you are. 
Stardust doesn't see you as a pony who's changed into what you were now by a mad doctor. He just sees Windthrasher. Plus, there's some ponies out there who are into a little strange now and then, if you know what I mean. Look at me. I'm with the Griffin. It doesn't get much stranger than that, I said, trying to cheer her up. She smiled a little. I guess I shouldn't judge myself too harshly. No, I still don't know if I should tell him until I know how he feels. He's been through a lot the past few weeks. He needs time to heal in his own way. No matter what happens, I'm happier being with all of you over being alone. That's more like it. I couldn't tell but smile. I'm supposed to be the gloomy one around here, not you. I said, bumping her flank with my own, sharing a laugh with her. She laughed. So you think I'm adorable, huh? Oh, don't start reading into it. I don't see you in that way. I meant that, uh, like a stuffed animal or some other thing that's cute. She laughed. Even if you did, I'm too old for you. <laughs> like that's ever stopped me before. I slept with Laser and Silver at the same time. She's way older than me, and she was a lot of fun, too. I teased. Wait, Laser Lights and Nemeres, too? I had no idea. She's not really. It was just her being drunk. Her judgment was way off. Interesting still. She didn't seem to care after that night. I wonder if it's happened before. Plus, who says ponies can't go both ways? The singer I slept with was a stallion. Ah, you really get around, don't you? I scoffed. Now you're making me sound like a whore. She laughed again. Loose, maybe, but not a whore. And just don't go messing around Honora. She's scary when she's mad, and I don't think my bloodlust can take the amount of your bloodshed. She'll spill, if you do something like that and she finds out. So are you. I'm not scary when I'm mad. I'm terrifying. There's a difference. Scary is quick. Terrifying leaves a scar for life sometimes. We both laughed as we finally made it to the small building that was set up at the back wall. It almost looked like a worn-down warehouse, with the words Enclave Skyport over the door. And just below uh, that was written in a smaller sign, Robot Repair and Tune-Up. And an even smaller sign under it said, Basic First Aid Clinic, Class Listing Inside. It was quite an old sight to see for a place like this. I thought the Skyport was for ponies for sending letters and stuff for to report, I said. Maybe the pony who runs it has a side business or something, Windthrasher said, looking at the sign. You sure this is okay? I don't think Doorstop would have sent me here if it wasn't, I said. Well, we won't know till we go inside. She was right, so we went in. I was expecting to find a couple of Pegasi in power armor guiding some official at a desk with a load of other Pegasi working in the back. Instead, it was a run-down looking warehouse with a desk set up in one corner and a sign over it reading Skyport Head Stallion. No pony was there. Maybe we came at a bad time or he's on break? Windthrasher was about to say something when she stopped, her ears turning back towards the door that led deeper in the warehouse. I think I hear some pony in the back. Boom! A small explosion rang out from the place Windthrasher indicated. The hell was that? We both ran towards the door, only to have it flung open and a plume of smoke pouring out on the doorway, followed by a Pegasus stallion. He was wearing a dark gray enclave uniform, with a patch on one shoulder that said Skyport Head Stallion. When the smoke started to clear, I could see what he looked like. He looked to be around Windthrasher's age. He had a light gray coat, lightly covered in soot. His mane was a pale pink and dark gray mix that swept over one side of his head, and he was wearing a pair of light red glasses over cyan-colored eyes. He coughed a little, saying, Note to self, <clears throat> mixing various chemicals found in the warehouse to serve as an alternate power source can be a violent reaction if heated improperly. Um, excuse me? Are you okay? I asked. He looked up as if he had no idea we were even there until I said something. Oh, I didn't know I had guests. Or did I forget that I had an appointment today? He gasped. Crap, I did miss some class attendance. Again? Ah, uh, where is that blasted sprite bot when I need him? 
He spoke so fast, it was almost hard to keep up with what he was saying. Um, do you work here, or are you just covering for some pony? I asked, a little confused by his strange behavior. He shook his head, then pulled a handkerchief out of a pocket. Using it to clean the soot off his face, he then smiled at me with blackened teeth, which was probably caused by the explosion. My apologies. Yes, I work here. Actually, I'm the only pony who works here. I'm Kittersfly. I you run the Skyport for Stratus and Nimbus. How can I be of use to you today? Or are you in need of repair for a robot? Maybe even some first aid basics? I have classes every once every two weeks, two times a day. I couldn't help but giggle a little at his fast speech. It took a quick minute to calm down and let out a cough. I have a letter that needs to be delivered to a Marin Stratus. Can you help me with that? I asked. Shouldn't be a problem, as long as she's in the area we cover. Who's letter for? He asked, heading towards his desk. This is so exciting. I never get to do anything here. I get bored easily, and I start to tinker, you see. And then things go boom, and I gotta clean them up and start alleviating my boredom all over again. He said, smiling invitingly. We followed him, both a little confused. As we walked back to his desk, I pulled out the letter Doorstop gave me. Quickly reading over the name on it, I said, It's for a mare named Fairy Glitter? The letter says she lives in the high-rise. He sat down at his desk, looking up at us both. His smile only getting bigger. Oh, I know Fairy Glitter, and she runs our intel department. Sometimes she also helps out in the hospital. She's friends with my dad. I should have no problem getting this letter to her. Who's the one sending the letter? I need to know for our records. It's from a family friend of hers. I didn't get the pony's name. I'm a courier, and he couldn't get him this to her himself, so he paid me to get it there instead. Ah, I know a dodge when I see one. I'm guessing the one sending this is a Dashite, he said, starting to write down some information on a small book he had laid out in front of him. Does it matter if he is or not? I asked. Not at all. We get this kind of thing now and then. Dashites are always afraid to let the Enclave know they're still alive or in contact with the family. I'll just write down that it was dropped off by a courier, and that should be fine. The fee for sending this letter is 50 caps. Of course there was a fee. Not only did Doorstop not pay me for this, it was costing me my own hard-earned caps. Grumbling a little, I pulled out the caps and gave them to Kittershy. Kittershfly. Here you go, I guess. Just make sure the letter makes it to Fairy Glitter. You can count on me, ma'am. I'm heading up to Stratus soon anyway, so you came at the right time. I spend a week down here and a week up there helping my dad. I'll make this delivery my second stop when I get there. He said, taking the letter from me and placing it into his satchel. Quinn Thresher asked, Why can't it be your first stop? The pony who sent that really needs to get it to her. We can pay extra if it helps. I glared at Wind Thrasher. Why did every pony volunteer to spend more of my caps? Kittersfly didn't seem to notice my look. He just chuckled. Because my first delivery is to our High Council pony, Nightshade, from Mr. Tops. His stuff always gets delivered first. It's part of our deal with the Strip. Hey, are you a bat pony? Windthrasher took a step back, trying to hide behind me a little. Maybe. Why do you care? Oh, you don't need to worry. I just think it's fascinating. Part of me finds them cute. I don't know why, but I just always have. Anyways, I've heard there were bat ponies down here, but I've never met one. I thought most of your kind were out near Hoofington. At least that's what I've heard rumors of. He said, still smiling. I could see Wind Thrasher blushing again. Th 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 thanks, I, I guess. Her voice was quieting. She wasn't born that way, and the story behind it's long and brings up a lot of bad memories. I said. I didn't mean to pry, I just wanted to know is all. That's fine. Hey, I was just wondering what you were doing in the other room? I asked. He laughed. Oh, just messing around with some new ideas, that's all. I tried something new when the experiment went oh so very wrong. Normally, I run a small robot repair business out here, and when I'm in the wasteland, I don't get much business for the Skyport, so it keeps me occupied, and it pays nice too. Then, of course, my basic first aid classes that no one seems to want to be a part of. Oh well, I remain optimistic about it. It's not like I pay anything for that. Maybe a bigger sign. I don't know. 
He talked to himself, looking thoughtful. Okay, then. Well, we should be going. Please get that delivered as soon as you can, I said, turning to leave. Can do, he said, still smiling. Come back in a week, just in case I have a return letter for your dash-eyed friend. When Windthresher and I were back outside, I looked over at her. That definitely wasn't what I was expecting from an Enclave stallion. He was nice, she said. Yeah, a little strange, too. But he did think you were cute. She blushed. Oh my gosh, Shadow, stop. She laughed a little. You were the one who kept saying, how could a pony like me and blah 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 blah, I teased. She just shook her head. Anyway, back to what you said. You gotta admit, it's better than most Enclave ponies you've met, right? Yeah, I guess. Oh well. At least I got that letter delivered for doorstop. We should get back. It's late, and I'd rather be relaxing. I said. It sounds good to me. As we started to head back, I got a strange feeling while we walked. Looking back, I swore I could see some pony running between two of the buildings. But I couldn't be sure. Deciding it was just my imagination, I turned following Windthrasher. I decided I needed to get my mind off of what has been happening, so I turned on the radio. It's been a long time since I've listened to the news around New Pegasus. Right away, I heard the smooth voice of Mr. New Pegasus floating out of my pip buck. Hello, everypony, and thank you for joining me on this late-night broadcast. The last song was a local favorite of Sweetie Belle, recorded the day she did her big concert here on the Strip a few days after the attack on this great city by the zebras. I have a lot of things to update you on since the last broadcast, so sit back and relax while I put on my news pony fedora. You may know by now that the trading town of Cartwheel was destroyed a few days by the Steel Rangers. Not just any Steel Rangers, mind you, oh no. This was the branch from out west. It seems like a small war has broken out between our Hidden Sands Rangers and the ones from Los Alicorns. Neither elders could be reached for a comment on the matter, but this old pony got some inside information from a griffin that was right there after the attack. Sadly, it is all true. Cartwheel is no more. Nothing more than a pile of rubble and one last building standing alone next to the remains of Equestrian Express. Yes, I know what you're all thinking. Mr. New Pegasus, isn't the Equestrian Express the same place the Courier worked for? Well, yes it was. But don't worry too much. After a short capture by the Steel Rangers, the Courier and her friends managed to escape. She was declared that, even though the Equestrian Express building is gone and the old buck who started it died during the attack, she would still keep working as a Courier. In her own words, quote, Equestrian Express won't die while I'm still around. In other news, the NLR have lost another platoon while fighting the Romans, who are still slowly working their way west and towards New Pegasus. Even worse, I have reports that at least one Sin was spotted near Crossroads Trading Post earlier today. She was able to somehow kill 40 highly trained members of the NLR Rangers. I'm not sure what's been going on, but if the NLR don't start gaining ground, the Romans are going to be able to push right into the city. Also, I've heard another rumor that our own courier was spotted at Crossroads Trading Post before the attack. From what I've been able to gather, she was helping the Red Talons work out a peace treaty between the Annihilators and Trotston. It looks like she was able to do it, bringing an end to a 50-year feud. Normally, I'd say if you're listening to courier, then good job. But from where I sit broadcasting in the heart of the Strip, I can see her out my window. So good job, Courier, and if you're ever free, do stop in and say hello. Well, this has been New Pegasus' favorite broadcaster, Mr. New Pegasus, with the news, every pony, And remember, I have a soundtrack coming out soon, titled Mr. New Pegasus, Nuclear Winter Wonderland. Have a good night, every pony. More music started to play. Ignoring it, I sighed and looked up at one of the buildings where the the radio tower was sitting on top. I could just make out the shape of a pony on a high window. Not much else. Figures he'd broadcast my location. Idiot. You shouldn't be surprised. You know that they always like to have a pony thinking that 
they know more than you do. At least you didn't say we're staying in the Lucky Horseshoe, Windthrasher said, chuckling a little. Yeah, yeah, laugh it up. Let's just get back. We didn't get much further when a pony in a blood-red cloak stepped in front of us. No, not a pony, a zebra. He was tall and had scars over his face. He walked close to me and said quietly, Courier, Shadowstar, the Caesar wants to know if you have learned anything on Mr. Tops. I'd almost forgotten the request made by the Caesar to a couple weeks back. I haven't put much thought into it, and it's not like I can just wander around inside the tower. Windthrasher hissed a little. What do you want? Ignoring her, the zebra said, Courier, tell your slave to keep quiet. I felt anger bubbling up inside me. Windthrasher isn't a slave, you moron. She's my friend. What do you want? He looked angry for a moment, then said, I do not care what you call her, courier. Mares like you and her are only good for one thing, and that is for being our slaves. If the Caesar did not need you, then you would have been no use than the rest of your kind. So do not tell me what that disgusting thing is. Tell me what I want to know. I was about to say something, but Windthrasher beat me to it. She moved closer to the zebra. You think mares are only good as slaves, do you? I suggest that you back away before I am forced to kill you. I'd like to see you try, dickhead. I'm not scared of you and neither is Shadow. Now answer my question. Windthrasher said, showing her fangs again. The zebra grinned a little. I am not scared of you either, monster. If you want an answer to your question, then yes. Zebra mares should only be good for breeding, keeping the home clean, and to help raise our young. Pony mares are only good for selling to other ponies for use in whatever way they wish, or target practice. Now get out of my face. Your breath smells like a whore's taint. No. I'm not letting you speak to my friend that way. If that's how the Romans see pony kind and mares, then I'm not going to help them with anything. Tell your Caesar to fuck off and find another pony to make their way into the Lucky Horseshoe. Oh wait, you can't, because no pony can get in, I said condescendingly. Come on, Windthrasher, let's go. Insensitive waste of breath, she said to the zebra, then turned to follow me. Wait, he said, sounding annoyed. As much as I hate to say this, we do need your help, courier. Yes, if I was the one who ran our great tribe, then I would do things differently than our Caesar. But I am not. I am just one of his soldiers. At least go and see him so he can explain his reasons himself. Windthrasher turned back to him. You should have thought about that before you insulted us. I see no reason to keep talking to you. In fact, I hope you get shot on your way back home. He looked even angrier as he said, I was ordered by the Caesar to give the courier this message. When Thrasher left, laughed. So just say it, we say no, and leave, and you'll be in trouble? Yes, I will be, and it will not stop him from coming to find you, he replied. When Thrasher hasped again, then why should we care what happens to you? The first thing you did was insult us. Windthrasher, that's enough, I said, trying to calm her down. Machado. I cut her off. Windthrasher, like you said, it's just a waste of breath. I'll think about it. What's your name? I asked. Kijin. Why? He replied. I'll go see the Caesar. But if I see you there when I'm meeting with him, I pulled out Misery. I'll jam this through your skull after I've cut off your balls and fed them to you. I'll do the same thing to any sons you have. Males are so very precious to you, after all. For the first time, he looked a little scared. I will be elsewhere doing the Caesar bidding. You will not see me, but before I go, you will need this. He pulled out a gold medallion that had a symbol on it. I took it, asking, What's this for? Show it to one of our guards in Driftwood Cove. They will bring you into our camp. It is the mark of Caesar. It shows that you are to be trusted. He said, and then his cloak flashed, and he vanished. Windthrasher seemingly calmed down. 
I couldn't hear him move. Those cloaks of theirs are scary. Yeah, they are. She looked back at me. Are you really gonna go? I'm not sure yet. I really don't trust the Romans. At the very least, I'll give the Caesar a chance to explain to me why he needs my help. But if he's just as fucked up as Kijin is, well, my sword will have more work to do. I'd rather never see any of them again. I've heard stories from some of the NLR soldiers I've worked for. None of them are good. She said as we started back towards the Lucky Horseshoe. Yeah, I agree. But we can't let one zebra's attitude make us see the rest of the race the same. I guess. But I still don't like this. I smiled. I know, and that's why when we go see him, we'll have a plan. I'm not going to let some zebra dictator tell me what to do. Now, let's go get some rest and start planning for what we're going to do at Crimson Canyon in a couple of days. It sounds good. Oh, and Shadow? I looked back at her as I pushed the door open to Lucky Horseshoe. Yeah? Can we keep the conversation we had earlier between the two of us? Sure. Let's go see our friends. When we finally made it back to the royal suite, we both walked in to find Bite and Wingnut in the middle of some kind of argument. Wingnut was just saying, That's a bunch of bullshit! You can't tell me that you really think something like that'll work! If you do it the right way, then yes I do. You're the one who's too thick-headed to see the things the way I do, stupid bug. I walked over to where Aura was watching them, chuckling to herself. What are they arguing about? It started with Vite trying to explain how her gravity gun works. I lost track of what the real argument was, about somewhere between why mares are smarter than stallions and what gems work better in a laser rifle. I'm just enjoying the show. Okay, so we should just leave them alone? I asked. Stardust walked in from one of the other rooms, smirking. I think you could get a word in edgewise. Just let them go at it. I'd say only step in if they start kissing to make up. I grinned. Nah, if that happens, I'm just gonna let them be. Aura looked back at me. So, how'd it go at the Skyport? It was... different, but good. I think I'm going to try to get a little nap in. Later, I'd like to talk about what we'll be doing at this celebration. Sounds good. I'll be in later. She said, going back to watching the two fight. Yawning, I walked back into the room, set my saddlebags down, removing my barding, and laid down on the soft bed. I closed my eyes and let myself relax. It didn't take long for sleep to come. And it did right before I was swept off into the world of dreams. I heard something inside my head. Soon, Shadow. Soon. <laughs> Footnote. Level up. New perk added. Negotiator. You've made a lot of deals throughout your journey, and a lot more of them have been in your favor rather than not. It's now easier to convince someone to agree to any terms you have during dialogue and your barter skill is permanently raised to 15, allowing you to gain better prices at all shops, bazaars, and markets. Quest item added. Mark of the Caesar. You now possess the Mark of the Caesar. Any crimes committed against the Romans up to this point have been forgiven, and you have been allowed a meeting with the Caesar himself. Be careful, however. If you commit any wrongdoings against the Romans at this point on, You'll be hunted and quite possibly killed by Roman assassins.